Hello everyone, welcome to Triple B Big Blue Banter. I'm Michaela Dunlap. And I'm Joanna Brown. Today we've got an exciting show in store. With that, let's jump into the women's final four. The women's final four is set. Iowa will face UConn while South Carolina will take on NC State. Fans are paying large amounts of money to watch these highly anticipated games tomorrow. I think it's been a special year for women's basketball. So special, women's Final Four tickets are now selling for more than double what the men's cost. Logitix, a company that analyzes such prices, says women's tickets have averaged more than $2,300 the past couple days. For the men's Final Four, that number is about a grand. And Ticket IQ says the most expensive seat to see the women Friday runs more than $11,000. The number one reason why women's college basketball has gotten so popular, it's Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. She's player of the year after this ceremony yesterday. Something I probably won't really wrap my head around until my career is all done. And she holds the all-time scoring record for both men and women in the NCAA Division I. Caitlin Clark is doing something that we have never seen before in the women's game, and she is shooting the ball from very far away. Clark facing off with LSU star Angel Reese is bringing extra attention to the game. Ticket prices have been surging since Iowa beat Louisiana State Monday. Reese says she has her eye on the pros after declaring for the WNBA draft yesterday. Clark's got at least one more college game first. But someday. If it's Steph versus Caitlin Clark, they might need to hold it in a football stadium. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Iowa women's basketball's Caitlin Clark has changed the landscape of college basketball. Earlier today, Clark was awarded Associated Press Women's College Basketball Player of the Year. This honor marks the second straight year that the Iowa senior has taken home the award. Like I said, I think it's been a special year for women's basketball, uh, so to win this award is really special. Um, but to be back here playing with my team, um, I couldn't script it any better. I know some of them are here somewhere back there. I'm not really sure. Oh, right there. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. Um, this is just as much yours as it is mine, and um, my parents are here, and I love you guys to death. And um, Yeah, I'm just very grateful and thankful, and I'll see you on Friday night. Caitlin Clark and Iowa will take on Paige Beckers and the Yukon Huskies on Friday night in the NCAA Final Four. Speaking of Caitlin, one dental student is showing his support in a different way. Brian Dang created a mosaic of the superstar Clark out of Rubik's Cubes. He planned out a pixelated image and then 720 Rubik's Cubes later, his masterpiece was complete. The Naismith Women's College Basketball Coach of the Year Award was presented earlier this week to South Carolina head coach Don Staley. She was also the Associated Press Women's College Basketball Coach of the Year, which she received this morning. She has led her team to 36-0 this season, making it to the Final Four for the sixth time since she became head coach in 2008. Our game is incredibly competitive, um, and any time that you um, can stand and win one of these awards means um, a lot of people put a lot of work into it. So thank you very much. I'm super honored. Switching over to the men's side, the defending champs, UConn Huskies, are back in the Final Four. The school is excited to send their team off in hopes of another championship run. UConn will take on 4C Alabama Saturday night in Phoenix. They have been dominating the tournament this year, beating their opponents by an average of 28 points. Unfortunately, one opponent they could not beat was airline troubles. A rough travel day to Arizona on their way to the NCAA Tournament semifinals. The team experienced lengthy delays and mechanical problems with two of their planes. Their original aircraft had mechanical issues and then there were delays with the replacement aircraft due to weather and minor mechanical issues. The issue was resolved by an onboard mechanic and the team was finally on its way, arriving early Thursday morning, eight hours after their expected arrival. Yesterday, fans gathered outside the Dale Basketball Center in Raleigh, North Carolina to send off their men's basketball team to the Final Four. This will be the first time NC State has gone to the Final Four since 1983 when they won the championship. We have seen a lot of success for NC State's men and women's teams this season, and both will be playing in the Final Four this weekend. Fans gathered in Tuscaloosa on Tuesday to send off the Crimson Tide men's basketball team as they also prepare for the Final Four. Alabama had their work cut out for them this season out of a very competitive SEC 
then be named a 4C in the NCAA tournament. The tie will be facing the defending national champions, the Yukon Huskies, on a Saturday afternoon. It should be an eventful weekend in Lexington as both baseball and softball teams are getting ready for SEC matchups. Baseball will face number 13 ranked Alabama at home starting on Friday while softball is traveling south to College Station to take on number 14 Texas A&M. Hopefully both teams will be victorious in their seasons, but the SEC is arguably one of the hardest conferences in eSport. It will be interesting to see the outcomes. Switching over to baseball, KHSA High School Baseball has a large slate of tournaments this weekend. Lexington Christian will be in Fort Walton Beach in the Beach Bash Tournament. Lexington Catholic will be playing Station Camp in Gallatin, Tennessee, and then St. X and Trinity are both playing at home in Louisville. For the KHSA softball, West Jessamine and Mercy Academy will be in Fort Walton Beach for the Beach Bash week this weekend. Then East Jessamine and Bullet East will play in the Cal Ripken Experience in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Coming up on Big Blue Banter, Matt Powell and Ali Chetanok will look at the big bets for the week and give their own picks. And with that, we'll be right back. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Dude, I thought you were driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. I, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> if you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. Welcome back. As we've discussed, the men's and women's final fours will be played this weekend. We are going to send it over to Mac and Ali for this weekend's betting spread. Thank you, Michaela and Joanna. Well, Mac, it's been an eventful tournament with many storylines in both the men's and women's brackets. It has been a very fun march, and a march that has been very nice to me betting-wise, so I can't complain. Let's take a look at what picks we have for the Final Four this weekend. On the men's side, I love the UConn Huskies. It is probably everyone's pick, but how can you go against the dominant Huskies? They just had a 30-0 run versus a very good Illinois team, and over the past two tournaments, have won every game by double digits. So my best bet in this game is UConn to cover the 11 and a half. I believe Alabama's streaky shooting will not be able to keep them in this, and this might get ugly fast. In the other game, I have Purdue winning, but NC State to cover the nine and a half. America's favorite DJ Burns has captured everyone's heart, and this NC State team is on a run that you can make a movie about. As fun as the story is, the Cinderella has to end, and Zach Eady will be way too much for the Wolfpack and get Purdue into a championship for an elite championship game versus UConn. Those are my picks, and I absolutely love them, and expect to continue my Red Hot March. Yeah, Mac, I like those picks a lot, and I'm going to parlay them this Saturday together. Now for the women's Final Four, I'm taking the Blue Blood UConn Huskies over the sensational player to ear, Caitlin Clark. The Iowa Hawkeyes have been must-see TV, but UConn will cause them troubles as Paige Beckers is healthy once again and has been on fire this March, averaging 22 points per game. So give me the UConns in an upset over Iowa. I also think South Carolina will cover the minus 11.5 over NC State. They haven't lost all season, and I do not see them losing on Friday versus the Wolfpack. South Carolina versus UConn will make an awesome championship, and I think the Huskies will win it all in both the men's and women's tournament, just as they did 10 years ago in 2014. Those are our best bets of the week. If you want to win some money, take our bets this weekend. But be smart and bet wisely. Now let's send it back over to the desk for a very unique story. Thanks, Mecca and Ali. 
Next on Triple B, how old would you expect the top martial artist in the nation to be? Well, you will be surprised to learn she's only 17 years old. Stick around to hear more about the top jiu-jitsu competitor. We'll be right back. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. For most of us, there are no guarantees, no golden tickets, no easy roads. But at the University of Kentucky, there is a promise to support and inspire you, to reach for what's possible, to lead and create, to heal and discover, as we help solve the world's toughest challenges, transforming lives and improving communities. At the University of Kentucky, we promise to make the possible real. One of the top martial artists in the nation is just 17 years old. She studies Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and is competing where she started. Johnny Residines has a story in Las Vegas. The 17-year-old Jiu-Jitsu phenom was back competing in her hometown, making the best of the best look ordinary. It feels amazing, you know, I was born and raised in Las Vegas, so um, uh, it's definitely great uh, being back home competing, especially at such a big tournament like ADCC West Coast Trials. Helena started jiu-jitsu when she was just eight years old, when she took a class at an LVAC. She liked the fact that it was a sport where the smaller person can beat a much bigger opponent, and after a few classes, she was hooked. They like had us like little kids just like wrestle each other without you know even knowing anything and I always liked um, uh, that you know I'd get to the mount on the kids and I was like I like this. With her win at the ADCC West Coast Trials, Helena will be the youngest ever competitor to qualify for the ADCC World Championships, one of the top jiu-jitsu competitions. She recently moved to Austin, Texas to train under John Donaher, one of the greatest jiu-jitsu coaches of all time and he says her maturity is well beyond her years. When I actually saw her training in the, in the gym it quickly became apparent she's a superb student. She learns incredibly quickly. She immerses herself in study. She takes the sport as seriously as any of the professional athletes and she's doing it to the age of 15, 16. On the ground she could go with anyone in her weight division in the world, even the top people and do extremely well. Helena says she hopes to inspire more girls to give jiu-jitsu a shot, whether it be for self-defense or for the sweet feeling of getting your hand raised. Being able to attack any part of the body, uh, really, and you know, manipulate your opponent, it's really an amazing sport, especially for girls, and I'm really happy to see a lot more girls competing in jiu-jitsu. It's so cool to see girls entering non-traditional sports and dominating at it. So question for you, Michaela. Have you ever punched someone in the face? Well, that's all of your big boo billion tour we have for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Thursday. Have a great night.